Hello and welcome to the Apostolic Teachings Podcast. This episode is a part of the media ministry of the Honorable Bishop Paul A. Weatherly. This episode was recorded during one of our Bible studies that take place on Sunday mornings, Thursday nights, and our Young People's Tuesday night Bible class. Again, thank you for joining us and enjoy the message. So, uh, today our lesson is going to be on peace. And if you have a book, it's on page 21. The focus thought says what? God's peace keeps our hearts and minds secure in this troubled world. God's peace keeps our hearts and minds secure in this troubled world. And before we begin the lesson, this focus thought is talking about a different kind of peace. There are a lot of places that are trying to give people peace. Uh, I work in a facility that deals with drugs and alcohol and mental situations and problems that people have. And they uh, give them medicines uh, to try to calm them down and uh, to take care of their anxiousness. Uh, not only their anxiousness, but uh, their, uh, they have anxieties and depression and, and all kinds of different things that people have. And what is amazing to me is that those places are repeat customers. They call them customers or consumers there. And Sister Ashley worked there for a, a long while, a number of years. And we've seen the same people coming over and over and over. And, and, and the reason why we see this precision uh, over and over again is because they're only temporary help. Right. Right. They're looking for peace and they're looking for a help in their minds because this world's messed up. And it will try to cause you to lose your mind if you fool around very long. And, and, and what they do is they try to give you something that will be a temporary fix. But what they don't understand is that those are temporary. Mm -hmm. yep. Those are only a partial help. And yes, they do help people with anxiety. And they do help people with depression. They give you pills when you're depressed to get you up. And they give it when you're, when you're wired out and excited and, and, and your mind is just racing and anxiety has kind of got a hold of you. They give you something to lower you down. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Kids, they're pumping them full of uh, medicines. They used to give them Ritalin all the time because they said, you know, that they were just, uh, what's the word? Uh, <laughs> uh, they, <laughs> I know I'm trying to think. <laughs> They were too much for the teachers. Uh, they're extra, is what y'all say. Uh, in reality, they're just kids. Yep. See, now y'all, I'm, I'm from a different time. So I'm going to look at things different than most people in this day and hour. Uh, I've been around for almost 60 decades. I mean, six decades. So I don't see some things. And we expect children when their children to come into a classroom mm -hmm. and do this here. Mm -hmm. You're not supposed to have any kind of emotion. Yeah. And you're supposed to just sit there. And you're supposed to just listen. And, and yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. And uh, you know, you got to ask for me. Can, can I please go to the bathroom? I mean, mm -hmm. to me, it's ludicrous. I, I'm just being honest. We are doing the same thing in school that we did in the 1800s. Mm -hmm. yep. Yep. That's right. And it ain't working. They do the same thing at school that they do in jail. And they do it in the church too. Mm -hmm. Yep. Not this church. Said still be quiet. But a lot of churches. So. <laughs> a lot of churches. Y'all see what happens when we start praising? Them kids take off running around, they get tambourines and mm -hmm. hey. So, the mindset of this world is to try to control you. They want to control you 
with drugs. They want to control you with power at school. They want to control you on your job. Yep. If you don't do what they say, they'll, you know, well, we'll just write you up. We'll fire you. So what? Write me up. Fire me. I'll find another job. I had a job when I was getting, when I came looking here, I got one and I will look, I'll be looking for another. Did you talk about being disruptive? No, I'm talking about being real humans. Yep. Everybody don't learn the same way. Right. Everybody don't have the same things and need the same things. So uh, we're going to try to understand a little bit different. The world has a way of trying to give you a artificial peace. That's what it is, artificial. Right. Uh, any, anybody like artificial pop? <laughs> nope. They try to give me that artificial sugar stuff. You know what? Uh, I don't know the names of the, of the stuff that they give you. They give you pop This that they changed and took the sugar out and put in some kind of, what do you call this? Aspartame. Yeah. Fake sugar. I don't want nothing fake. I don't, I don't want nothing fake. Talk about, well, we're going to give you uh, uh, some cake with Splenda. Man, I don't need no Splenda. Give me some sugar in my cake. Amen. I know, baby. Y'all probably like that, don't you? You, you, you like that, that substitute stuff. They want substitute salt. No. <laughs> What's it called? My mom used to use it. Uh, Mr. Dash. <laughs> she put that on stuff, man. Give me some salt and pepper. Give me some real stuff. I don't, I don't want no fake nothing. I ain't never been fake my whole life. And I don't believe God likes fake. I really don't. He's a real God, and we need to be real people. But here, this focus verse uh, in Psalm says what? Come on, y'all. All right. If you don't have it, it's right up there on the on the screen. The difference in peace and what's great peace. Anybody know what the difference is? Anybody? What's the difference in peace and great peace? Great peace is the same. Long lasting. Long lasting, he said. All right, I like that. I like that. Great peace is beyond natural peace. Great peace is beyond what we can do. You can take and go off. Uh, we, we sometimes go into another part of the world when we go on vacation. Sometimes we'll go to the Caribbean or we'll go to Belize or we'll go to Jamaica or we'll go to... Uh, Honduras and different places and you go and you get a get a place, a room and you go out there and you go on the beach or whatever and you take your time and just relax and you push all of the junk through your life away and you try to get peace there you try to just entertain something that's a little less hectic but that is only temporal and like Sister Graham just said, great peace is when you're in the middle of a tormented place. You got chaos going all around you. Uh-huh. And yet you are right there and calm. Not worried. Not upset. See, some people don't understand that worry is fear and fear is not of God. Because the Bible says God hath not given us the spirit of fear but of power, love, and a sound mind. So a lot of times we don't understand uh, that we are operating in a different mode than most people. And most people don't understand the peace that we have. And we're going to try to cover that today. But it says, great peace have they that what? Love thy law. Which love thy law. Now, this here is important. It's vital. It's vital to us. Anybody ever get you all mad? Anybody been mad? Come on. Anybody? Listen. They done got on your last nerve and danced on it. 
You say, I got one nerve left and you on it. Mm -hmm. That's one thing. But what about quit being offended? Somebody said something to you. Somebody did something to you. And you immediately offended. You may have been offended. Mm -hmm. I have. Yeah. I've been offended. Man, people talk crazy to me. Man. Y'all might be super saints. I'm real. Somebody talk crazy to me, Desmond. Some on the, my, my, my hair in the back of my neck stand up. I'm, I'm just real. Uh -uh. oh. Y'all can try to be super saints. I ain't super saints. I'm a real person. You talk crazy to me, and I get, I, I get upset, man. I mean, what the old folks call the hackles on the back of my neck, you know. You down talk me like I'm some kind of piece of trash. Yeah, yeah. And I'm going to get offended. Mm -hmm. You don't show me respect. I'm going to get offended. <laughs> The difference in that happening because it's normal and having great peace is knowing the law of God. What is the law of God? What's the first law of God? The first law of God. Love the Lord God God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Second law. Love thy neighbor as thyself. And he said, all the law and the prophets hang on those two things. So God, the Bible says God is love. So when we really have the love of God, we have God. And so the difference is, is when I love God and I know the love of God, the law of God, I have love in my life. I have love for people. Even when they do me dirty. Boy, God, quiet real fast. Even when they do me dirty. They know they did me dirty. I know they did me dirty. But it doesn't control my reaction. Because when I really love the law of God, what does it say? Y'all don't believe that. You see, yeah, but you don't understand this part. I'm talking about this one situation. No. Nothing is supposed to offend us. That's a big order. It's a large order for people. Go ahead. Well, if I can just point out that this is being written before the New Testament, before anybody had the Holy Ghost. All right. And so these are people that aren't saved as we mm -hmm. view salvation. And here it's saying nothing shall offend you. Right. And so we've, we've talked about this in the past. Uh, what does it take to get saved? That's my little buzzer. Forgiveness. Get there. We're forgetting the first key factor. She had it. I mean, she's, she's got. We forgot the first key factor. She said faith. What are you talking about? There. That's the real. That's the first key in the book of Acts. Sister Mary, Acts two thirty eight. We got to go back, make sure that we understand this in a, in a real sense. What's that say? Then Peter said to them, repent and then come. That means y'all even English majors. I, I'm not an English major, but I know enough about this. Whenever there's a comma, that means that that is one thought. Repent. What does it mean to repent? I'm sorry and I'm going to change my life. I used to shoot dope. I lost everybody. I'm real. I used to shoot dope and I was sorry for my sins and asked God to forgive me and I don't do it no more. That's repentance is a turning, a 180. I'm going this way, I'm turning now. I'm going in a different direction in my life. And so that's what the first thing is, is to make a decision that I am not going to live like I lived before. Right. Right. Then after I repent, then I've got to be what? Baptized. Baptize every one of you. How? In the name of Jesus Christ. 
For what? What does remission mean? Removal. Removal. Taking away. Doing away with. Because if you ask God to forgive you of your sins, he'll forgive you, but you're still carrying them. You haven't got rid of them yet. Because he said if you confess your sins, I'm faithful and just to forgive you. But you're not washed. You're not clean. And if you're going to be a new creature in Christ, if you're going to start over and do it again, you got to repent, be baptized, every one of you, not some. And we're not going to get baptized in title, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Because that's not a real baptism. It never happened in the Bible. Let me say this again. I'll give you my house. Remember what I told you last time, brother? I'll give you my house. I'll give you my cars. I'll give you every dime on my bank account. Whatever you want. I'll give it all to you. If you can find one place in the King James Bible where somebody was baptized in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Never happened. Ever. Anywhere. But you know how many millions of people are being dumped down the water in titles? He said, in the name. In the name. Father is not a name. Son is not a name. Holy Ghost is not a name. Those are descriptive things of what they are. Father is what he is. That's not his name. Son is not a name. It is what he is. Holy Ghost is talking about what it is. That's not a name. So we have to be baptized in the what? In the name. Of who? Jesus, Jesus is the one who died on the cross. Mm-hmm. He's the one that is covering your sins. Why would I go and get baptized any other way and do anything? He said in the book of Acts, he said, in all that you do, check this out, all that you do in word or in deed right. means whatever you say, whatever you do, do all in what? In the name of Jesus. That's scripture. So we've got to make sure that what we're doing is biblical. And so for us to have the peace of God, we have to start out right. All right. So let's go to our lesson text. John 14. John 14. And this here is showing, uh, where is it starting at 23? Yeah. That's where it's starting, but uh, I may want to uh, go a little bit further than that uh, if we can. I've got to look at it and see where we're at on it, so I don't want to tell us wrong. Um, do you have John 14 pulled up? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's, let's start right at the beginning. Let's start right at the beginning. And that's verse 1. And it should be up here on your screens. What's it say? Let not your heart, Let not your heart what? Be troubled. You believe what? In God. Where? Now this is, if you were in a red letter edition Bible, you'd find out these are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. All right? He said, if you believe in God, believe also in me. He said, in my Father's house are what? And if it were not so, what? I go to prepare a place for you. And? And if I go and prepare a place for you, what? I will come again. Uh-huh. And what? And receive you unto myself. That where I am, what? He may also be. Now he said, I go to prepare a place. What's he talking about? Hmm? Is he trying to let us know he's getting ready to go to the cross? He's trying to give them a hint that, hey, I'm getting ready to get out of here. I'm going to prepare a place for you. 
But I'm going by the way of the grave. And what else? He said, if it were not so, I would have told you. What? And whether I go, what? Ye know. And the way, what? And they was like, what are you talking about? It's amazing that they were there and had been with Jesus for three and a half years and still didn't have a clue really what was going on. So it don't bother me when people come to church for five years and don't really understand some things. This was God manifesting the flesh. Mm -hmm. yes. Jesus Christ. His best friend didn't understand what he was saying. And he was trying to tell them of great things to come and they didn't, they didn't understand. When he talked about a kingdom, he thought they were going to come up and rise up and take over the Roman army and they were going to be the rulers. Mm -hmm. They were fighting on who's going to be on the left side who's going to be on the right side. All right. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Now, Thomas had a lot of problems. You ever heard of the old saying, Doubting Thomas? Yep. You ever heard that term before? Mm -hmm. Y'all heard that? Doubting Thomas. They don't really believe what you're saying, are you just a doubting Thomas? This is because of him. It's in the Bible. We take so much from the Bible and use phrases and we don't even know what we're saying or where it came from. But he said, hey, we don't know. You've been with him all this time you still don't know. So Thomas is the one Jesus had to prove to after he died and came back. He had to prove to him who he really was because he was always doubting. He said, how do we know the way? And how can we know? Jesus said to him, what? I what? I am the way. The what? The truth. And what? And the life. No man what? No man cometh to the Father but by me. You can't even come to the church. The Bible says no man can come unless he's been drawn. Right, right. A lot of times we think we're making a decision to go. But if God didn't put a desire in us to do anything, to go, whatever reason we got. It don't matter if you came to church because your girlfriend was coming. It don't matter if because your wife started going there. It don't matter if your great uncle said, hey, come on. If God don't draw you, you'll never have a desire to go. Right, right. For whatever reason. God uses all kinds of reasons mm -hmm. to get people into the house of the Lord. Mm -hmm. So he can speak to them, right. deal with them, help them. But if without the spirit drawing, that won't happen. He said, if you had known me, what? Verse 7. If you had known me, what? You have known my father also. And from henceforth, what? You know him. And what? Now, wait a minute. The Bible says no man has seen God at any time and lived. But what did he say? He said, you have known me and you have Know my father. Right. Henceforth, what? You know him and you have seen him. Right. That's what Jesus is saying. Mm -hmm. You have seen him. You know him. And what did Philip say? Lord, Philip said unto him, what? Lord, show us the father, us the father and it suffices. Or show us who he is and we'll be, we'll be fine. Right. It'll be sufficient for us. If he just show us. What do you say? Jesus said to him, Have I been so long time with you, yet thou hast not known me, Philip? I've been around you. See, this is a way that you can really understand who Jesus is. Most people have never read this scripture. They'll read all kinds of scripture. They've never read this. And it's in your Bible. He said, How have I been with you, Philip, all these years? And you don't even know who I am. What does he say? If thou. Have what? Have I been so long time with me. And you have not known me Philip? He that hath what? See me. See me hath what? And how sayest thou then? Show us the father. He said I am. I am the father. I'm in human flesh. But I am the father. If you've seen the. Me, you've seen the Father. And how to say, 
Show us the Father. He said, Believest thou that not that I am in the Father, the Father in me? The words that I speak, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. Believe me that I am in the Father and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very works' sake. All right, what's next? Verily, verily, I say unto you. What does verily, verily mean? Pay close attention here. You can't miss this, is what he's saying. This is important. Verily, verily, I say unto you what? He that believeth on me. He that believeth on me, the works that I shall do, what? And what? And greater works than these shall he do because what? I go unto my father. And whosoever will ask what? In my, name. in my name, that will I do. That the Father may be glorified in the Son. And if you ask anything, what? In my name. I will do it. So we have to understand first who we're dealing with. This is God that has been manifest in the Spirit. All right. And if you now, now that we have a little bit of understanding there, let's jump down to 23. That's our lesson text part of it. Jesus answered and said to him, what? If a man loved me, he what? And my father, what? And what? Y'all read And we will come and, and, and make our abode with him. He that loves me, what? Keepeth not my sayings. And? And the word which you hear is not mine, but the Father's which sent me. So, somebody tell me why he keeps referring to that. How you doing, sis? How do you, how, why is it that he keeps referring to this? Does anybody know? To not giving himself anything. He always keeps saying, my father, my father. When he clearly said, we're one. Go ahead. Because he didn't want anybody to get hung up. Well, there's two main reasons that come to my mind. Number one, he didn't want people to get hung up on the body, on the, on the vessel. Right. And number two, it was... Uh, he would have been, you know, killed for for saying that I am God. Right, right. Because he's under the law. Mm -hmm. Right. The law says that you cannot serve any other god. Right. Okay. That's what right. the law says. There's only one God, and you can't serve any other. So he could not bring any reputation to himself. Right. Because that would be breaking the law if people worshipped him mm -hmm. right. as a fleshly body. Right. And so. The other thing, the other part is, is that he knew his fleshly body was going to be gone. Right, right. It was being, he came down out of heaven, wrapped himself in flesh, walked among us only to walk to the cross to give himself as a sacrifice. Because right. the Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Right. And he had to figure out a way to remit sin or to remove sin from the earth. And that was the only way, biblically, because he can't go against his word now. Right, right. His word was settled long ago, saying, without the shedding of blood. That's why they gave animal sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Anybody, some people don't understand that. But that was a law. Without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sins. There's no getting rid of it. Right. And so what they would do is they bring in, for different kinds of sin, different trespass offerings. Sometimes it was a goat, sometimes it was a lamb, sometimes a turtle dove, sometimes it was an oxen. It just depended on what you were trying to uh, satisfy your payment. Because sin is guilty. Right. And it has to have a payment. If you race down the road at 100 miles an hour and they pull you over, what are they going to do? But they're going to give you a penalty. They're going to write you a ticket. If they don't take it, yeah, they're going to write you a ticket. And they're going to have to have somebody going to have to satisfy that ticket or you will go to jail. You can usually just pay the ticket and that's all right. Mm -hmm. Same thing with sin. 
You got sin in your life. You got to pay for that. Right. Right. And right now, without a payment, that's held on you. Without the baptism in Jesus' name, is on you. You haven't paid that ticket yet. But once you go in that water and you repent of your sins and are baptized, that stuff is removed. And the only reason it happened like that is because Jesus came down and gave himself as a sacrifice or the ticket payer. He's making the payment for your sin by giving his body. And he's doing away with animal sacrifices. That was, what, that was the purpose. Up until that point, that's what was the satisfied. That's what satisfied the guilt and the sin was the animal sacrifice. And he was going to do away with that. Some people don't understand, well, that's cruel. Why would he ask for animal sacrifice? Anybody ever thought that? Do you feel like that's cruel to kill an animal for your sins? I mean, most people would. Like, why, why do we have to kill an animal? And people don't understand it. Why would God introduce that? Does anybody know where it started from? See, we need to know why. Not Cain and Abel. It started right outside the garden. It started in the garden. Does yeah. Yeah. anybody know about the beginning in Genesis where they went in the garden and Eve? Does anybody know that God told them you can have everything you want out here? Mm -hmm. You can eat of all the trees everywhere in the garden. They're all yours. I made this place for you. But there's one tree that is mine. God said, this tree, don't touch it. Don't touch it. Don't eat from it. This is mine. God always reserves. He always reserves something for himself that is not for us. That's why we, listen, and I was going to, uh, maybe, maybe, I hope you can follow. This is the reason why we do dope. This is the reason why we have illicit sex with folks. This is the reason why we drink the. You know why? We're trying to fill a hole in us. And we might probably do it unconsciously. We're trying to fill a hole in us, that loneliness or that desperation that we don't have that complete love that we want because God reserves that for himself. Right. That makes sense? So he's always got a place that only he can feel in you. No one can feel it. I don't care how much sex you have. I don't care how much drugs you do. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care. It doesn't matter what you try to fill it with. You're still going to feel empty. You can find the most beautiful woman. You think, man, in my life, this is it. Or the most handsome man that's chiseled. This is, this is it. And you'll still have a hole in your heart. After a while, it'll become common. That person you thought was an Adonis or you thought she was the best thing go, after a while is just average. They're just, it just doesn't fill you. And that's because God has a reserved place in your soul for him. The garden was the same way. This tree is mine and nobody else's. So they went and they violated the law of God. They sinned. And they ate of the fruit. That was sin that had to be paid for. Mm -hmm. yep. So what did they do immediately? Anybody know what they did? They tried to cover it up. We always try to cover up what we did wrong. Mm -hmm. That's in our nature. I figure I'll just hide it. Nobody will know. So how did they hide it? They tried to cover it with a natural way or a man's way of thinking. I just grabbed some trees. Because there wasn't nothing else. Right. There wasn't no material. They hadn't woven any clothes. And they tried to take some raggedy leaves. Now, if y'all want to figure this out, real reality, go out and get you some trees in your house or by you. Just grab a bunch of leaves and, and tr try to tie them together and cover yourself. Tell me how that works. Your best cover and you're still exposed. Yep. I don't care what you do. 
I don't care what you do. Uh, what's that? They, they got a show. They got a show on called uh, Naked and Afraid. Yep. Have you ever seen it? Yeah. They try to make shift clothing for themselves, mm -hmm. but they're still exposed. Mm -hmm. yep. That's the way it is with sin. It doesn't matter how you try to cover yourself; you're still exposed. Mm -hmm. And God came by. He said, "Where art thou, Adam?" Now, this is God that made everything, right? This is God has it to let beyond anything. And he asked the question, where art thou? What do you think that question was for? Do you think he didn't really know where they were at? That's it. Give him a chance to, where we read on there, repent. Mm -hmm. To say, I'm sorry, I messed up. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they just came to God and said, we made a mistake, Lord. Please forgive us. I wonder what would have happened, but they didn't. They try to cover it up. And then, <laughs> hey, bro, this is what they did first. Just like all of us men do. Oh, well, God, it was that woman you gave me. <laughs> she messed everything up. I was doing good to guard until you brought this woman in. That's what he said. The woman thou hast given me. This is why we're in trouble. It's his fault. That's his fault. He, he, supposed, to be, he supposed to be the leader. He supposed to be in charge. He made you fall up. Hey, God didn't speak to the woman. God spoke to him. God told the man, don't you eat there. And he was like sitting back. She went up there to the tree. She grabbed it. And he said, well, she didn't die yet. God says you're going to die. Then she took a bite. She didn't die. Okay, I'll take some now. Use her as a guinea pig. Mm -hmm. <coughs> there ain't no man. And that's what problem is in this world. We'll have a lot of men. They won't stand up and say, hey, oh, no, 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 honey, that's it. That's the wrong thing. Don't do that. Because usually they get beat down. You ain't going to tell me what to do. Okay. I can't do the next thing. They ain't going to tell me. Come on, one of you young ones know how to do that. I can't do it good. I'm not a woman, I don't know. But you know what I'm saying? They'd be like, hey, back up off me. Who are you to tell me? But he wasn't a man. Or he would have screamed at us, stop! Don't touch it! Don't! Don't! But you let him do it. What kind of rag did you do to that? He's the same one that said, hey, all right, now that we're in trouble, let's get some leaves and try to put it together. And he wasn't no saint just either. His idea of covering up with some leaves was raggedy. Just like his excuses about it being her fault was raggedy. Mm -hmm. And there had to be a bill paid for the sin. How did he pay the bill? Anybody know? God. The Bible said God slew some animals and gave them animal skins. Cover them. To cover their nakedness. Because if you don't have a covering, you're exposed. I hope you follow me. That's the love that Jesus had for us. That he came and gave his life blood. Gave that body for a covering. Let me tell you something else the bishop was teaching on yesterday. You know what else is your covering? If you're a woman, your husband should be the covering. Mm -hmm. yep. I'd even go so far as if you're courting. Well, mm -hmm. I lost half the church. Yet. Even if you're engaged, you're supposed to be the covering. Mm -hmm. And you know who else is the covering? Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to be your covering. Mm -hmm. If you're a single woman, your pastor should be your covering. That's why you come and ask advice as your pastor. Why? He's supposed to give you good advice, good covering. That's not your side piece. He's a holy covering, not something else. Make that clear. But the man of God is a covering for the church. It goes, God is 
my covering. I am the covering for the church. The man is the covering for the woman. And the woman is the covering for the children. There's order in God's house. Right, right. Always. And the only way you can have real peace that we're talking about in here is have everything in order. And so men got to be men and stand up and help and guide and lead. Does that mean women don't know nothing? I didn't say that garbage. Most of the time the women have to cover the family because you got a bonehead guy that ain't around. Or when he is around, he's too stupid to know how to handle things. So you have to have a woman take and be the cover. Well, I said it, and I ain't taking it back. I see it all over. He's, he referred to the book of Judges, where there wasn't a bunch of mealy mouthed men that didn't want to fight. And so Deborah, who became the judge there, she said, if I bring the victory, I'm going to be in charge. And they made her charge because she brought the victory. And all that mealy mouth men had to listen to what she had to say. Yep. And when you've got a woman that's got to run things, you've got a man that they, well, let me just be nice today. Let me be nice today. Y'all know I'm going to be a nice guy. I was just saying. Yeah. They ain't work for the clothes that they're in. If he ain't working and providing for his wife, if he's not protecting his wife, if he's not making sure she's got a home and he ain't worth two nickels in Chinese money. See, that's the problem that we have in churches is nobody wants to preach and teach like me. They want to tell you it's all right for the woman to make and do all the work and the man to sit around and collect off of her and live off of her. And uh -uh. No, that ain't biblical. Man ought to stand up and do some stuff for her and take care of her. Be the strength for her. So, oh, I'm so depressed, honey. Oh, I'm just scared. I don't know what I'm going to hey, You know the men like that? Crying. And she'd be like, I'll just stop it now, honey. Come here. It'll be all right. Why she, what, she take care of you? You emotionally just drop. You're a man and you're emotionally distraught. I don't know if I call you a man. You might be a whoa man, but. <laughs> That's what I say. Whoa man. You, you belong with the whoa man. <laughs> People think, uh -uh. I know it sounds comical, but I'm trying to be real with us today. We have a position that even when it doesn't feel good, you got to stand up and say it. And a lot of times we have allowed the weaker vessel, that's what the Bible says, we've allowed them to take charge of everything. And you know what? Now you need to shut up and listen. You know, gave her the reins. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. You're the one, you're the one that's letting her do all the work and making her get it, letting you know all the money and take care of the house and take care of the bills and take care. I guess you need to shut up and, and be quiet, put your dress on. <laughs> Let her, let her take control, I guess. You ain't did nothing to do nothing different. And you sure ain't smart enough to keep things going now. You might as well let her have it. Well, let me go back to this because I lose half the people when I start teaching like this. Which, where are we at now? Verse 25. These things have I spoken unto you being yet what? Present. Present with you. I'm telling you things because I'm here right now. All right? But verse 26 is what? But the comforter. But the comforter. Now, look, we're making sure you understand what the comforter is. He wants you to know claim. But the comforter what? Which is, Which is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is your comforter. It is what's going to give you peace. All right? The Holy Ghost, whom the Father what? See, you didn't know the name of the Holy Ghost. When they were talking about that baptism, 
to buy baptized in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, and in the name of the Holy Ghost. I told you, if you if you get baptized in a name and they say, Father, that ain't the name. Right. If they baptize you in the name of the Son, that ain't the name. If they baptize you in the name of the Holy Ghost, that ain't the name. You know why? You don't know the name. Right. Right. So we know the Son's name was Jesus. So at least say that. Mm -hmm. And the Holy Ghost, what do you say? This is Jesus talking now. Mm -hmm. Jesus said, what? Whom the Father will send in what? My name. So the Holy Ghost's name is what? Jesus. Jesus. Shall teach you what? All things. all things. And bring all things to your what? Remembrance. Whatsoever I have said unto you. The Holy Ghost is what's going to lead you and guide you. The Bible says when the Spirit of truth is come, He'll lead you and guide you into all truth. And that's what He said. He's going to, the Holy Ghost is going to remind you which is God. The Holy Ghost is God. Because God is the Spirit. And that's what the Holy Ghost is the Spirit. They're not separate beings. They are one. He said he's going to remind you of everything that I said. Alright? Verse 27 says what? Peace I leave with you. What are you talking about peace I leave with you? What is the peace we're talking about? The helper, the comforter. That's what I'm fixing to leave with you. The Holy Ghost is peace. The Bible says that Jesus or God or the Holy Ghost, whichever one you want to pick, he said that God was the king of what? Salem. Anybody know what the king of Salem means? King of peace. King of peace. You didn't know that, did you? What the Bible says. That comes out of your Bible. Huh? Yeah, Mount Chesley. Mm -hmm. So, the king of peace said, I'm going to leave with you my peace. He's going to send his peace. I'm going to give you my peace. What is it? I'm going to give you my Holy Ghost. Or, as another part of the Bible says, the earnest of my spirit. Right. He said, I'm going to give you an earnest, a little bit of my spirit. That's what's going to lead you and guide you. Mm -hmm. All right? Not as the world give I peace, what? Not as the world give them. Give I unto you. See, what's the world got? They got pills. Mm -hmm. You're anxious, so they give you pills to take. It's a substitute for the real peace. Right. I'm depressed. So they give you pills. If you have the real peace, you won't be depressed. Mm -hmm. We gotta understand, God's peace ain't made up out of some medicines. Mm -hmm. I don't need medicine to be at peace. I need God. That, that's what I need. I need God. If I've got God in my life, I'll have peace. He said, peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world giveth. Give I unto you. Now, let me, let me make this clear. I wonder how many people caught that in that first phrase, first, the first part of that, the first sentence up here. How many caught that? This is to prove that there's one God. Did you catch it? Mm -hmm. Anybody catch it? Let me tell, tell me if you caught it. Well, at first he said that the Father was going to send him. Thank you. Go back up, Sister Weatherly. Go back up one verse. He said, but the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, or peace, mm -hmm. whom the Father will send mm -hmm. yeah. in my name. Now go, go, go to our next one, 27. He said, peace I give. Peace I leave with you. That comforter, I'm going to leave with you. I'm going to send you. My peace I give you. Now as the world gives it. So now he had God given it. He had him given it. We understand that them two are the same. There ain't two people given the same spirit. There's only one spirit. That's what the Bible says. You're one spirit in the one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Father of all, through all, and in you all. 
And ye have heard. Also, let me finish that. He said, uh, give I unto you. Let not your heart be troubled. Neither be afraid. The reason why we're afraid and fearful is because we don't have his peace. Yep. Right. He said that he hath not given us the spirit of fear. God hath not. So what the Bible said. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of love. What is love? God, God is love. God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. When my mind is sound, when I'm thinking correctly, when things are right in my life, and I see God for who he is, and I understand him, and I have him present in my life, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid of COVID. What's Psalm 91? Since where's the Psalm 91? And verse 10. Let's see if the Lord's helping me today. Now go back up to the beginning. I want to go back up to the beginning real quick. Let me just take. Verse 1 says, what's it say? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall what? Abide under, Abide under the shadow of the Almighty. And I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge, my fortress, my God, and him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver me from the snare of the fowler and from the noise of pestilence. He shall cover thee with thy feathers and under the wings shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Therefore thou shalt not be afraid of the terror by night and for the arrow that flyeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that, uh, that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side and ten thousand at thy right hand. But what? It shall not come nigh thee. Only what? With thy eyes will thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord thy refuge. Even the most high. What? What's habitation? That's where I live. I'm living in Christ. He is my habitation. And verse 10 says what? There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague. COVID is plague. Neither shall any plague. What? I ain't afraid of COVID. I walked in where they had people that were full of COVID. Laid hands on. Put my hands right on their skin. They were supposed to have. They breathed on me. When they were talking, probably spit on me. Bishop Manley, he was talking yesterday when he was teaching on faith. He was teaching about how when he was you know, recovering from all the different stuff he was going through, he wasn't wearing a mask during at his university when they had COVID going on. Right, there. right. And he didn't catch COVID at one point. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's that's the thing. If, if anybody feels like they need to do that, they can do it. I, I I don't tell nobody what to do. That's your own personal. I'm not I'm not your doctor. But I know what the Bible says. If you make God your habitation, you don't have to fear plagues. Ebola ain't got nothing for me. Come on, somebody. It doesn't matter what it is. It can't have control of me if I'm in Christ. Right. The problem is when I'm not in Christ. Right. That's it. But we got to understand there's a lot of people that love fear. Do you remember how bad it was during the pandemic? Anybody remember? I mean, the, every commercial and everything talking pandemic, pandemic. It's COVID, 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 COVID. Yeah, yeah, here just when's the last time we heard about COVID? Like two years <laughs> they just declared. I guess the president had to declare that it is over. He declared COVID was gone. People get COVID today. Still get COVID. But he declared it was over. 
like, wow, that's, that's powerful to be able to declare a, 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 a plague and a disease is gone when people are getting it. People still getting COVID. They're still getting it. Um, you say it won't hurt you? All I have is Bible. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Where is the secret place? Under the shadow of the Almighty. That means he's my covering. Remember what we just talked about covering? Yep. Thank you, Lord, for the help. Mm -hmm. He covers me under the shadow of his wing. I don't have to fear evil. I don't have to be afraid. Right. My peace is not a disease that I have to be afraid of. My peace is God that has power right. over every other thing. Mm -hmm. That's where the real that's where the real piece is. Man, I don't went past time. I just... Thank you again for joining us and tuning in to our podcast. We hope you enjoyed it. If you want to hear more lessons like these, you can find us at Apostolic Church of Jesus Christ on Facebook. We're located at 614 North Franklin Avenue, Sand Springs, Oklahoma, if you would like to attend service. God bless.